Hey everyone, today I'm checking out ShapeLab Lite, the newest addition to the ShapeLab family. If you've been wondering what ShapeLab Lite is all about, and how it compares to the full PC VR version, and what you can actually create with it, stick around and I'm gonna walk you through the key features, show you what's different from ShapeLab 2025, and do a little sculpting demo to see what's possible. So, ShapeLab Lite is basically a streamlined version of ShapeLab 2025, designed to run on standalone VR headsets. Currently, it's available for MetaQuest 3 and 3S, and it's soon to be released on the Pico. That means you don't need a high-end PC or any cables, just your headset and you're good to go. The whole idea behind ShapeLab Lite is to make sculpting more accessible, while still keeping the core experience intact. ShapeLab Lite is a more affordable alternative to the PC VR version, with all the essential tools, things like clay, smooth, crease and move. So whether you're a beginner in 3D modeling and want to start with the basics, or need something with easy access to sculpt on the go, it's a really solid option. Now, there are a few key differences between ShapeLab Lite and the full version. Since it's optimized for lower hardware specs, you won't find advanced features like multi-resolution sculpting or some of the more complex modifiers. In terms of features, ShapeLab Lite will continue to get updates, which will mostly consist of essential features that are already present in the PC VR version, we will focus on implementing core features while maintaining a smooth operation and ease of use. For the full list of differences between ShapeLab Lite and ShapeLab 2025, please visit our help page, it's gonna be linked down in the description. The performance is still really smooth and it feels great to use. You can even import and export models and reference images, it's just a little different than on BC. I'll quickly show you how that works. You just open up your browser, download what you need, and in ShapeLab Lite, at the import menu, you can select your file from your downloads folder. Adjust the scale and position, and you're good to go. It's pretty straightforward. Note that you'll have to grant access to all files for ShapeLab Lite the first time you open up the file browser in the app, or in the app settings in your headset. You can also transfer files between your PC and headset via cable. If you click the pop-up notification in your headset after you've plugged it in, you'll be able to access the files on your PC. You can see I'm already putting it to the test, I'm doing some quick sculpting. I started by blocking out the shapes with the move tool and refining the forms with the clay and crease brushes, just like I would do in the PC VR version and I'm finishing it off by smoothing everything out and adding the final details. Even with the lighter setup, it still feels super responsive, and you can definitely get some nice results out of it. I can even import some of my more complex scenes in it without any problem at all, and what's really cool is that I can use pass-through anytime by just selecting it in my environments. So that's a little preview of what ShapeLab Lite is capable of. Whether you're a beginner or just looking for a more portable sculpting solution, it's a really good option to have. If you'd like some more in-depth tutorials or breakdowns, let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe for more ShapeLab content. We've also just come out with a new update for ShapeLab Lite, so check out the new features and keep an eye out for more! See you soon and happy sculpting until then! Bye bye!